It is time for the Raw Report. PPG Paints Arena, the new igloo in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I talked about like that ticker in the in the corner of the screen that they that all these channels love to put up with their their stuff on it. And Raw is coming on USA last night, and what they actually had in the corner of the screen for USA and one of Cable's top shows uh, was a a little countdown clock telling you that the American Song Contest was going to appear on NBC and it was beginning live, and that's what they counted down instead of for Raw. So the WrestleMania Raw takes a backseat to the American Song Contest on NBC. Four men announcing crew last night, Jimmy Smith, Byron Saxon, Michael Cole, and Corey Graves. show started with a three-minute video package of Brock Lesnar stalking Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman over the last two weeks on SmackDown. Finally, about six minutes into the show or so, Brock Lesnar actually came out in his black cowboy hat. The the cuddly country Brock Lesnar, at least as close to one as he can be. He's out there just being a goofball. He's happy. He's cheery. He wants to hand out country-ass kickins. And then the fans started chanting, what? <laughs> and... Cheery, happy Brock. He said, well, that's okay. You guys have your fun. And they chanted what? It's, aw, shucks. You guys go ahead and play along. What? Ah, guys, that's funny. What? All right, that's enough. It's pretty much what it was. It was a guy just like, you know, just bile was coming out through his teeth as people were chanting what on him because he actually lost his train of thought a little bit, but he ended up getting everything back. Uh, got into the meat and potatoes of his promo, which is the, the the part about taking Rome into a carnival. That's how he's looking at this. And and they can become wedding crashers together. And, and, and when Brock marries his title to Roman's title, it can have a little baby called the unified title that he's going to get full custody of. I didn't do any of that, very, uh, really any justice. Brock was, was very, very good there, so... After that, the announcers ran down everything else that was going to be on the show, including the fate of Seth Rollins being decided by Mr. McMahon, because, of course, and this cannot be said enough, Seth Rollins did not have, <laughs> did not have a clear path to WrestleMania, a two-day, 14-match show. He did not have any way to, to get himself on the show besides trying to do stupid human tricks uh, with AJ Styles and with his friend Kevin Owens trying to get on the show. It's just, just not good at all. But The Miz and Rey Mysterio were out next. He went to commercial. He came back. Miz cuts a promo, says he's going to take Ray's mask like he did last week, says he's going to call out the new luchador. It, of course, is Lucha Logan. Logan Paul comes out doing a cartwheel. Long story short, with this match, Dominic got kicked out before it began, and that actually took a little bit of time. They start the match, less than a minute goes by before we go to commercial. They come back, less than a minute goes by, and Rey Mysterio pins The Miz with a sunset flip. It's like, okay. And they got The Miz with a double 619. Logan Paul didn't help his friend. He just sat there on the outside, and that was that. So the baby faces conquered these guys that have been coming after them. They get revenge. They stand tall. They get the mask back, and the only thing I can take from any of this is that probably one of the backlash matches, it's going to be The Miz against Logan Paul. Veer is supposed to be debuting next week on Monday Night Raw, surely. Seth Rollins went to find Vince McMahon. Apparently it's 7 o'clock in the morning. That's what the timestamp said on the video package that we got of him showing his ass into Vince's office. Long story short here, Vince just basically asked him why he didn't come to him in the first place for a match. Vince wonders how they could have the most stupendous WrestleMania of all time without Seth Rollins. He thinks about it and thinks that they, they could, but it would be better if Seth was there. And he had his own main event against a, a person of Vince's choosing that Seth is going to find out when he's in the ring come Saturday night. So it's good. Cody, right? Got 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 to be Cody. It better be Cody. Otherwise, I don't know what you're doing. Omos, Bobby Lashley, the rumors are true. They are going to go at it at WrestleMania. To be honest with you, I know some people want to get some more out of Omos. To me, there's you've gotten everything you can out of Omos. If he's not going to be 911 for you, I mean, I'm sorry. Get out of there. 
Send them to NXT, send them somewhere. I don't know what you do with them, but I think the best visual is seeing Bobby Lashley somehow pick this guy up and crush him. I don't know if that's what they're going to do because maybe they want Brock Lesnar to do that. So maybe we see him beat uh, Bobby Lashley, but I'm not a big fan of it at all. Reggie has proposed to Dana Brooke, so they're going to be getting married. Apparently Tozawa uh, and, and, and Tamina are also going to be doing the same because he proposed to her and uh, she said yes. Our truth was standing by with a pair of binoculars watching all of this stuff to happen. Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, the Usos all came out for a promo. Unfortunately, the what chance got Roman as well, too. But finally, he was able to kind of settle into his promo, too, and he was absolutely great. About 10 minutes total uh, promo time of him talking about the fact that him being busted open by Brock Lesnar called a, caused a lot of strain for his family. Uh, he talked about his family not wanting to, to, to for, they wanted him to quit the business. Uh, they, they just, he goes on about talking how Brock and his, his battles with Brock are always going to be personal to him. And he did a, just a great job and sets the mic down, posed before he left the ring. Other than this and Kevin Owens' promo a little bit later on, I think were by far the best things on the show. We got a women's match, a woman tag match that went through a commercial break, ultimately ended with Rhea Ripley hitting the riptide on Zelina as uh, Carmella tried to uh, cry to Corey. The heels couldn't get along. They all were fighting each other, so that's how that thing ended. Stone Cold Steve Austin, we got a straight out of 1998 Kid Rock, uh, Bauda Ba, whatever the hell the name of that ridiculous, stupid ass song was that I didn't want to hear 25 years ago, and I certainly don't want to hear it now. But I am happy that Stone Cold Steve Austin's coming back. That's the video package that we got. Kevin Owens then came out and cut his promo, and as I mentioned, it was a really, really good one. Uh, it says the KO show is going to be the main event on Saturday night, and it's too bad that this is just going to be the closest we're ever going to come to having that old Stone Cold again. Owens says that on Saturday, we're just going to get. Bored, drunk, podcasting, Steve. You know, Steve. A man too afraid to, to pick a fight with him. Uh, Steve. He's just going to have a chat about his career. No one says that he hates beer, but they're going to toast together as Steve crowns him the new Stone Cold and admits that his stunner is better. Not a stunner. Ricochet, the new Intercontinental Champion. He's got a title match coming up on Friday night. Loses in 105 seconds to Austin Theory. That whole match served as a backdrop so the announcers could talk about Theory and Pat McAfee. Then we, Triple H, I don't know if you guys have heard this or not, but Triple H retired. And if you missed any of the mainstream media coverage or headlines that that thing got, WWE just like retweeted all of them in front of your eyes with graphics and pictures. So that's how we got to hour three. And Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch. Once again, doing a little bit more than I would have thought before WrestleMania. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper V back on the show, Wrestling Observer Live. The rest of this Raw review here. Sorry, I'm not that fired up for it. Wasn't that fired up to watch a whole lot of it. Bianca Belair was fired up, though. Says she's winning on Sunday. Becky came out, tried to sneak her from behind, took out a pair of scissors, was going to cut Bianca's hair, but then Bianca lifted her up. Hit her with the KOD. She hit another one, looked down, saw the scissors, and then just started cutting off Becky Lynch's hair. Everybody ran down. Bianca just sat down behind her, started cutting off more hair. I just, they're, they, again, some of the decisions that they made for this show, especially when it came to the baby faces, was okay. Uh, Becky was angry, uh, stared right into the camera, called Bianca a female dog. And that was that. Drew McIntyre plays Baron Corbin and Mad Cat Moss. This was all set up for, for Drew to beat up on Mad Cat Moss for Baron to walk away, sneak Drew, and then steal his sword, which I'm sure Drew is going to get back this coming weekend. Edge and AJ Styles cut promos on each other. And then the main event non-title match, the Usos against RK Bro. Thank God that the Survivor Series is only the one time of year where these wrestlers from different brands face off against each other. Uh... Orton went for the RKO on Jay when the Street Profits snuffed him from behind for a DQ. Nakamura and Boogs got involved. RK Bro took out the Street Profits with RKOs and then did it again. No sign of Alpha Academy anywhere except in the Snickers commercial that aired on the show. So I was reading this book about bats. The book explains that a bat cannot stand and then take off. 
Okay. A bat can only fly, fall from a great height and then fly. Gotcha. Sting is now a bat. He just goes up on something really high and he falls. He, he did not jump through these tables. <laughs> no, he, he fell. Just, he fell. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.